connection between female beauty and male infatuation is one of the most regular sequences of cause and effect observable in everyday life. E.H. Carr, What is History? Hi, and welcome back. Chapter 20 describes the first half of Camacho's wedding. It begins with the second mythological description of a dawn in Don Quixote Part 2. Key here is Don Quixote's high rhetoric contrasted by Sancho's snoring. While Sancho sleeps, Don Quixote reasserts his feudalistic fantasy regarding the natural relationship between master and servant. Don Quixote thinks he's plagued by worldly concerns, whereas his servant labors in ignorant bliss. But readers know that Sancho has serious concerns and that Don Quixote is actually a bad manager of his estate. So Don Quixote's speech is not only comic, but also problematic and thematic. There's also another subtle critique of the Inquisition embedded in Don Quixote's speech. The line, with envy towards none and envied by none, echoes Fray Luis de Leon's famous poem, Upon Leaving Prison. The great poet and theologian who taught at the University of Salamanca spent four years in jail for supposed heresy. Given the previous chapter's struggles, its allusions to the Inquisition and its references to the University of Salamanca, the distorted logic of ethnic and religious persecution remains relevant in chapter 20. Finally, there is an amazing double thelgma in Don Quixote's speech. The extent of your desires does not attain to more than sustaining your ass because that of your person remains atop my shoulders. At an obvious level, sustaining means feeding in the first clause and then supporting when it is reduced to the pronoun that in the second. But there's another option here. Since Sancho is often equated with his gray, ass can also be the word indicated by the pronoun that. Think about that one. And note how Cervantes relates all of this back to the ethnic theme. Sancho does not awaken, so Don Quixote pokes him with his lance and Sancho smells sides of roasted bacon. Ham products are often ethnic markers in Golden Age Spain. Did you know, during the Spanish Golden Age, all kinds of ham were consumed publicly as a means of demonstrating one's Christian faith. This was because the religions of Jews and Muslims prohibited them from eating ham. Contradicting his former speech in defense of arranged marriages, Don Quixote is once again more interested in Basilio, and faced with the prospect of a wedding feast, Sancho also changes his mind and now supports Camacho. I am of the opinion that the poor man should be happy with what he has and not go about asking for earth apples at sea. Note how Sancho sounds downright capitalist here. On a good foundation, one can raise a good building, and money is the best groundwork and foundation in the world. Don Quixote tells Sancho to shut up, and Sancho suddenly refers to his contract with Don Quixote, a contract of which we have absolutely no knowledge. You should remember the articles of our agreement that we drew up before we left home this last time. One of them was that you were to permit me to talk all that I might want. Like readers, Don Quixote can't recall this contract. We'll return to employer-employee relations in future episodes. At this point, the narrator offers us a cornucopia of diverse dishes prepared for the wedding feast. His details are hyperbolic, an accumulation of images that allows the feast to unfold before Sancho like a rhetorical exercise in excess. A big detail here is another allusion to the Morisco theme related to the same earthen jars from El Toboso that made Don Quixote cite Garcilaso at the beginning of chapter 18. And six pots that were around the bonfire were not made in the Turkish fashion like the rest because these were six wide earthenware jars, each large enough to hold an entire slaughterhouse of beef. What nickname is popularly applied to Camacho? A, the fat, B, the arrogant, C, the rich. Correct answer is C, the rich. 
Note the contrast between Turkish and Moorish styled urns. All of this is so abundant that it could have fed an army. Despite this allusion to war, the magnanimous feast produced by local wealth produces peace. Sancho begs for a taste, and one of the cooks offers him all he can eat with a strangely legalistic phrase. Brother, this day is not one of those over which hunger has any jurisdiction. Thanks be to Camacho the Rich. That's all for now. We invite you to watch our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Pan.